Welcome back designers. If you're new to the channel, my name is Richard Carpenter, a web design illustrator, and in today's two-part tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a new subscriber Twitch alert. So in part one, we'll be designing the vector artwork, and then in part two, I'll be showing you how to animate that vector artwork, ready to use on any of your live streams or just for practice. So without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial and get started. Okay, so for the design, I'm going to be basing this on the Game Boy game cartridge and I've set up some color swatches. So I've got the light gray for the base color and then I've got the dark gray for the stroke. And I'm going to start off with the rectangle tool and I'm just going to drag a rectangle roughly around the size of the reference image. I'm going to horizontally vertically center that within the artboard and then I'm going to color pick using the I shortcut key on the keyboard. I'm going to color pick the dark gray and then I'm just going to flip from a solid fill to a stroke. And then I'm going to increase the stroke weight from one point to 10 points. And then I'm going to reselect the rectangle tool and I'm going to create the notch or the cutout in the top right hand corner, as well as creating two cutouts on the left and right hand sides. So starting with the top right hand corner, if you just create a small square and then position that within the center and then using the rectangle tool again, about 50% of the way up from the bottom, I'm just going to create a small rectangle. And I'm gonna repeat this rectangle on the opposite side. So if you select, hold down the Alt key and then just drag that across until it lines up. To create the cutouts, we're gonna use the Shape Builder tool. So the first thing we wanna do is make a selection around all four shapes. Press Shift M on the keyboard for the Shape Builder tool, and then hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, and then just draw a line through parts of the shape that you wanna remove. So you should end up with something like that. And then if you feel like the cutouts are a bit too big, so for instance, the top right hand corner, we could probably adjust this bit and make it a little bit smaller. So using the direct selection tool, I'm gonna to select the corner anchor point, hold down the shift key and then select the second anchor point. And then I'm just gonna slowly move this side of the path up a little bit, just to make that cutout a bit smaller. And then if you select the whole shape using the selection tool, and then select the direct selection tool, you'll get the rounded corner radius handles. And then we just wanna round off all of the corners. Next, we wanna zoom in a little bit and then select the pen tool. And then we just wanna select or create an anchor point on this existing path so it lines up. Hold down the shift key to snap the line into a straight line and then not all the way to the bottom, but just slightly off the bottom path, create a second anchor point and then a third anchor point. We want to select this path, hold down the Alt key and drag a duplicate. Go to Object, Transform, Reflect, reflect the path vertically and then position the duplicated path on the opposite side in the same position. Using the direct selection tool, you want to select the corner anchor point on one of the sides, hold down the shift key and then select the opposite side, and then just round off that small corner. Next, we're going to be creating or replicating some of this detail that sits at the top of the card. So we'll start off with this rounded capsule shape. So select the rectangle tool and then just roughly, again, it doesn't have to be mega accurate, but just draft it out based on the reference image, position it in the center of our main shape, change the stroke weight from 10 to five, and then just round off all four corners. Reselect the rectangle tool and create a small or thin rectangle, which spans the width of our shape. Again, the stroke weight should be five points. And then we just wanna zoom in and duplicate the rectangle about five times.
select each rectangle holding the shift key and then go to object group. While the group is selected, hold the shift key and select our capsule shape to add it to the selection and then select the capsule shape again. And then when we do, the line should go a lot thicker. And then we want to vertically align in the center. And then we can just make any adjustments to these small rectangles. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. So holding the Alt key and I'm just going to move this up ever so slightly and then just drag it out. So the corners just overlap our main shape. Select the group and then select the direct selection tool to bring up the corner radius handles. And we just want to round off every single corner on all the rectangles. And then resize the shape just to get rid of this little white space. Next, we need to remove all these lines which are on the inside of our capsule shape. And the easiest way to do that is to select the capsule shape, go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place. Hold down the shift key and select our rectangles group. Shift M on the keyboard for the shape builder tool. Hold down the Alt key and then just draw a line through all of them and that will just remove all the inner lines from our capsule shape. Next we can start to add our placeholder for the sticker and our little arrow. First thing I'm going to do is create the arrow. So starting off with a square, select the remove anchor point or delete anchor point tool, which is the minus shortcut key and just remove one of the anchor points in one of the corners. Rotate the triangle so it turns into or looks more like an arrow facing down. While the shape selected, select the direct selection tool to bring up the corner radius handles and just round off the corners to give it that arrow appearance. And we'll just make that a little bit bigger. Next, using the rectangle tool, create the placeholder for the sticker. Select both shapes together and go to object group and then we want to position the sticker placeholder and arrow in the center of our main shape and we may need to move these up a little bit once you're happy with the placement of everything you should have something which looks similar to this hopefully you do and then we can start adding our shading and colors and before we do jump into doing any of the coloring if you do want to make any changes to the overall design it is best to do it at this stage because we will be expanding all our strokes Make a selection around everything and then go to Object, Expand and then make sure the Fill and Stroke are ticked and then press OK. And then from within the Pathfinder tool you want to select the Unite option. If you don't see the Pathfinder tool, go to Window and select Pathfinder and then once we unite our shapes it will basically merge everything into one big shape. To start adding colour to the design, first select the shape and go to Object, Live Paint, Make. Zoom out so we can see our swatches. Press I on the keyboard for the color picker. Color pick our gray color swatch. Press K on the keyboard for the live paint paint bucket. And then we just want to fill areas of the design we want to fill with that desired color. Now you don't have to fill the whole shape with gray. Feel free to experiment and use whatever color you feel is necessary. Once you've filled all your design with the color, select the shape and go to Object, Live Paint, Expand. Now we've created our shape, we want to do a bit of organization. So if you select the shape and go to Object, Ungroup, that should ungroup everything to show the individual layers. If we select one of our colored layers and go to Select, Same, Fill Color, and then go to Object, Group, and then do the same with our strokes or what was our strokes. So select the paths, select fill color, object group, and then we should have our line art on one layer and our filled shapes on another layer. We can now start adding the shading to parts of the design where there's going to be shading. So things like the little notches underneath the top of the arrow, maybe top of the pill shape and then in between each one of these squares similar to how the shading falls on the actual reference image and for the shading we're just going to use basic shapes in a pink color I'm not going to go into detail 
on how to create each shape essentially it's just going to be rectangles and then I'll show you or I'll jump back in once we've added the shading So as you can see all the little pink shapes are my part of the shading so if we select our pink color and go to select same fill color and then go to object group what we can do is we can grab that group from within our layers window and we can just move that down in between our gray colors and the line art for any bits of the shadow which or the shading which falls into other parts of the design what we can do is select the line art plus the shading layer press shift M on the keyboard for the shape builder tool and then we can just hold down the alt key and remove any parts which overlap and then once you are done we can just change the colour to something which contrasts with our base colour. With the shading all done, all that's left to do is to create your custom label. So you could have something which looks like this. So I've literally just created a custom label using the Rich GFX branding and then added an embossed version of the logo at the top. That's it for this one folks. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you want to stick around for more content, hit that subscribe button and hopefully I'll see you all in part two.